Understanding anger and frustration, welcome to turning to God on your frustration and anger. A journey through understanding how to manage these powerful emotions with God's guidance. In this first chapter, we will explore the nature of anger and frustration, emotions that are a natural part of the human experience, yet often challenging to handle. Anger is a complex emotion. It can be triggered by various situations, a harsh word, an unfair circumstance, or even something as simple as a bad day. Frustration, closely tied to anger, often stems from unmet expectations or feeling blocked in achieving our goals. These emotions can quickly spiral out of control, leading to actions and words we later regret. But why do we experience these feelings so intensely? The Bible tells us that anger in itself is not a sin, it's a natural reaction to injustice or hurt. However, it becomes problematic when we allow it to consume us, leading to sin. Ephesians 4.26 reminds us, In your anger do not sin. Do not let the sun go down while you are still angry. This verse highlights the importance of recognizing our anger and addressing it before it takes root in our hearts. When we hold on to anger, it can fester, turning into bitterness and resentment. These feelings can cloud our judgment and distance us from God's peace. But how do we address our anger in a healthy way? The first step is understanding its source. Are we angry because we feel wronged? Are we frustrated because things are not going as planned? Identifying the root cause helps us to approach the situation with clarity. Once we understand our anger, the next step is to bring it before God. He knows our hearts better than we do and is ready to guide us through these challenging emotions. Through prayer, we can express our frustrations and ask for his help in managing them. Take a moment to reflect on a recent time when you felt angry or frustrated. What was the situation? How did you respond? Now imagine bringing that moment to God in prayer. How might he guide you differently? As we continue through this audiobook, we will explore various ways to manage anger and frustration with God's help. We'll delve into the power of prayer, the importance of patience, and the healing nature of forgiveness. But for now, let's rest in the knowledge that God understands our emotions and is always ready to help us navigate them. In the next chapter, we'll explore how turning to God in prayer can bring immediate relief to a troubled heart. Remember, God is always with you, ready to calm the storm of anger and frustration if you turn to Him. The Power of Prayer in Times of Anger In this chapter, we will explore how prayer can be a powerful tool to calm the mind and seek God's guidance during moments of anger. When we are overwhelmed by frustration, turning to prayer is like opening a door to peace. A peace that surpasses all understanding. Prayer is not just a religious practice, it's a conversation with God, it's a way to express our deepest thoughts and emotions, knowing that we are heard and understood by our Creator. When anger rises within us, it can be difficult to think clearly or act wisely. In these moments, prayer becomes our lifeline, pulling us back to a place of calm and clarity. The Bible encourages us to cast all our anxieties on God because He cares for us. In 1 Peter 5, 7, we are reminded, Cast all your anxiety on Him because He cares for you. This verse is a powerful invitation to bring all our frustrations, fears, and anger to God, trusting that He will take care of them. Imagine you are holding a heavy burden, a burden of anger, resentment, or frustration. Now, picture yourself placing that burden at God's feet in prayer. Feel the weight lifting from your shoulders as you entrust your worries to Him. Prayer does not need to be complicated. It can be as simple as saying, Lord, I am angry and I need your help. In that moment, you are acknowledging your feelings and opening your heart to God's intervention. By doing so, you allow His peace to enter your mind and soothe your spirit. There are different ways to incorporate prayer into your life, especially during times of anger. Some people find it helpful to pray immediately when they feel anger rising. Others may take a moment to step away from the situation, finding a quiet space to reflect and pray. The key is to make prayer your first response, not your last resort. One effective way to pray during moments of frustration is to focus on gratitude. It may seem counterintuitive, but thanking God for His blessings can shift your perspective and reduce the intensity of your anger. By focusing on what you are grateful for, you remind yourself of God's goodness and faithfulness, which can help to calm your heart. Here's a simple prayer you can use when you feel overwhelmed by anger. Dear God, I come to you in the midst of my frustration. I feel overwhelmed by anger and I don't want it to control me. Please fill my heart with your peace and help me to see this situation through your eyes. Guide my thoughts, my words, and my actions so that I may respond in a way that honors you. Thank you for being with me and for caring about every detail of my life. Amen. As you make prayer a regular part of your response to anger, you'll begin to notice a change. 
the situations that once caused you intense frustration will start to lose their power over you. Instead of reacting with anger, you will find yourself pausing, praying, and allowing God to guide your response. In the next chapter, we will delve into the importance of seeking God's wisdom in handling anger. Remember, every time you turn to God in prayer, you are taking a step closer to peace and healing. Let's continue this journey together, trusting that God is with us every step of the way. Seeking God's wisdom in this chapter, we will explore the importance of seeking God's wisdom when dealing with anger. When emotions are high, it can be difficult to see clearly, but God's wisdom offers us a way to navigate these challenging moments with grace and understanding. Anger often clouds our judgment, leading us to react impulsively or say things we don't mean. But what if, instead of acting out of anger, we paused and sought God's guidance? The Bible encourages us to seek wisdom from above, wisdom that is pure, peace-loving, considerate, and full of mercy. This kind of wisdom helps us to respond rather than react, to build up rather than tear down. In James 1, 5, we are given a powerful promise. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault and it will be given to you. This verse reminds us that God is not only willing but eager to provide us with the wisdom we need, especially in times of anger and frustration. Consider a time when you felt lost in your anger, unsure of what to do next. What if in that moment you had stopped and asked God for wisdom? How might your response have been different? Seeking God's wisdom involves more than just asking for guidance, it also requires us to listen. In the quiet of our hearts, God often speaks, giving us insights and understanding that we might not have seen otherwise. This wisdom might come through a verse that comes to mind, a sense of peace that settles in, or a new perspective on the situation. To seek God's wisdom in moments of anger, start by pausing. Take a deep breath and acknowledge your need for his guidance. Then, pray for wisdom, asking God to show you the best way to handle the situation. As you wait on him, listen for his direction. Sometimes the wisdom you seek may be to remain silent, to step away, or to speak a word of kindness instead of anger. Here's a simple prayer for seeking wisdom. Lord, I need your wisdom right now. My anger is strong and I don't want to make a decision that I'll regret. Please guide my thoughts and actions so that I can handle this situation with grace and love. Show me the way forward and help me to respond in a way that honors you, amen. The wisdom God provides is not just for the moment, it's something we can carry with us throughout our lives. As we consistently seek his guidance, we develop a deeper understanding of his ways, allowing us to approach even the most challenging situations with confidence and peace. Remember, seeking God's wisdom is a sign of strength, not weakness. It shows that we trust in his higher perspective, one that sees beyond the immediate and into the eternal. When we rely on his wisdom, we are less likely to be swayed by our emotions and more likely to act in a way that reflects his love. In the next chapter, we'll explore how practicing patience and self-control can help us manage our anger in a God-honoring way. Let's continue to seek God's wisdom together, trusting that he will lead us to a place of peace and understanding. Practicing patience and self-control, in this chapter, we will explore the virtues of patience and self-control, two powerful tools that can help us manage our anger and respond to life's challenges with grace. These qualities are not just admirable traits, they are essential in our journey towards spiritual maturity and peace. Patience is often described as the ability to endure difficult situations without becoming upset or angry. It's about waiting calmly in the face of adversity, trusting that God is working behind the scenes. Self-control, on the other hand, is the ability to govern our emotions, desires, and actions, particularly when we are tempted to react impulsively. The Bible speaks highly of these virtues. In Proverbs 16.32, we are reminded, better a patient person than a warrior, one with self-control than one who takes a city. This verse highlights the strength that comes from being patient and exercising self-control, strength that is greater than any physical power or force. Patience is often described as the ability to endure difficult situations without becoming upset or angry. It's about waiting calmly in the face of adversity, trusting that God is working behind the scenes. Self-control, on the other hand, is the ability to govern our emotions, desires, and actions, particularly when we are tempted to react impulsively. The Bible speaks highly of these virtues. In Proverbs 16.32, we are reminded, better a patient person than a warrior, one with self-control than one who takes a city. This verse highlights the strength that comes from being patient and exercising self-control, strength that is greater than any physical power or force. To cultivate patience and self-control, it's important to start with small steps. Begin by identifying situations where you tend to lose patience or control. 
These could be everyday annoyances such as traffic jams or more significant challenges like conflicts at work or in relationships. Once you've identified these triggers, make a conscious effort to respond differently. One practical way to practice patience is to remind yourself that God's timing is perfect. When you feel impatience rising, pause and pray, asking God to help you wait calmly and trust in his plan. Similarly, when you feel your emotions taking over, practice self-control by pausing before you react. This simple act of pausing can prevent many regrettable words and actions. Here's a prayer to help you cultivate patience and self-control. Dear God, I often find myself impatient and quick to lose control. I ask for your help in developing these virtues in my life. Teach me to trust in your timing and to control my emotions, especially when I feel angry or frustrated. Fill me with your peace and guide me to respond with grace and love. Amen. As you practice patience and self-control, you will begin to see a transformation in how you handle difficult situations. These virtues will not only help you manage your anger, but also bring a sense of calm and stability to your life. Remember, patience and self-control are fruits of the Spirit. As you walk closely with God, He will help you to develop these qualities, making you more like Christ in your daily interactions. In the next chapter, we will discuss how finding peace in God's presence can further help you manage frustration and anger. Together, let's continue to grow in patience and self-control, trusting that God is shaping us into His likeness. Finding peace in God's presence, in this chapter, we will explore the profound peace that comes from being in God's presence. When life's challenges stir up frustration and anger, finding solace in God's presence can bring a deep sense of calm and reassurance. The world around us is often chaotic and overwhelming. We face pressures from all sides, work, family, relationships, and personal struggles. These pressures can easily lead to feelings of frustration and anger, especially when things don't go as we expect. However, the Bible offers us a powerful reminder in John 14, 27, Peace I leave with you, my peace I give you, I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. This peace that Jesus speaks of is not like the fleeting peace the world offers. It is a lasting, profound peace that comes from being in the presence of God. It's a peace that surpasses all understanding, guarding our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Think about a time when you felt completely overwhelmed by anger or frustration. Now, imagine stepping away from that situation and entering a place of quiet where you can be alone with God. In this space, you are free to lay down your burdens and rest in His presence. How does it feel to experience His peace in that moment? Finding peace in God's presence often begins with creating intentional moments of stillness in our daily lives. In the busyness of life, it's easy to forget to pause and connect with God. Yet these moments of connection are crucial for maintaining our spiritual and emotional well-being. One way to cultivate peace is through the practice of silent prayer or meditation on scripture. By focusing on God's word and inviting his presence into your heart, you allow his peace to wash over you, calming your spirit and soothing your mind. You might find it helpful to meditate on verses like Psalm 46, 10, be still and know that I am God, allowing the truth of this scripture to sink deep into your soul. Another powerful practice is to spend time in nature where the beauty of creation can remind you of God's majesty and his care for you. Whether it's a walk in the park, a moment by the sea, or simply sitting in your garden, being surrounded by God's creation can help you feel his presence more tangibly. When anger or frustration threatens to overwhelm you, take a moment to step into God's presence. Close your eyes, breathe deeply, and focus on the reality that God is with you offering his peace in the midst of your storm. Here's a prayer for finding peace in God's presence. Lord, I am often overwhelmed by the frustrations of life. My heart feels troubled and my mind is restless. I ask for your peace to fill me now. Help me to be still and know that you are God, that you are in control, and that you care for me deeply. Surround me with your presence and let your peace guard my heart and mind, amen. As you make time to dwell in God's presence, you will discover a peace that the world cannot give. This peace will become your anchor, keeping you steady even in the midst of life's storms. Remember, God's presence is always available to you. No matter where you are or what you're going through, you can turn to Him and find the peace you seek. In the next chapter, we will discuss the importance of surrendering your anger to God, allowing Him to take control and bring healing to your heart. Let's continue this journey of finding peace, trusting that God's presence will guide us every step of the way. Surrendering your anger to God in this chapter, we will explore the transformative power of surrendering your anger to God. 
Holding on to anger can be burdensome, but when we release it into God's hands, we find freedom and healing. Anger often feels like a justified response to injustice, hurt, or disappointment. But when we hold on to it, anger can become a heavy burden, weighing us down and clouding our hearts. God invites us to surrender our anger to Him, trusting that He will handle our hurts and bring justice in His perfect way and timing. Proverbs 3, 5, 6 reminds us, Trust in the Lord with all your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all your ways, submit to Him, and He will make your path straight. This verse calls us to trust God, even when we don't fully understand the reasons behind our anger or the situations that provoke it. Consider the anger you may be holding onto right now. What is it rooted in? How might your heart feel if you could release that anger and trust God to handle the situation? Surrendering your anger to God doesn't mean ignoring your feelings or pretending everything is okay. It means acknowledging your anger, expressing it to God in prayer, and then choosing to let go of the desire to control the outcome. It's about releasing your grip and allowing God to take over. One powerful way to surrender your anger is through prayer. Begin by naming the specific situation or person that has triggered your anger. Speak honestly to God about your feelings and then ask him to help you release that anger and trust in his justice and grace. Here's a prayer of surrender you can use. Dear God, I come before you with my anger and frustration. You know the pain and hurt I feel and I don't wanna carry this burden any longer. I surrender my anger to you, trusting that you will handle this situation in your perfect way. Help me to release my desire for control and to trust in your justice and grace. Fill me with your peace and guide me as I move forward. Amen. As you practice surrendering your anger to God, you'll find that the weight begins to lift. You'll experience a sense of freedom and peace, knowing that God is in control and that he cares deeply about your struggles. Remember, surrendering your anger is not a one-time event. It's something you may need to do repeatedly, especially when new situations arise that provoke frustration. But each time you surrender, you are strengthening your trust in God and deepening your reliance on his love and justice. In the next chapter, we'll explore the role of forgiveness in releasing anger and finding peace. Let's continue on this path of surrender, trusting that God will guide us to a place of healing and freedom, the role of forgiveness. In this chapter, we will delve into the role of forgiveness, a powerful and often challenging step in releasing anger and finding lasting peace. Forgiveness is not just about freeing others from blame, it's about freeing ourselves from the prison of anger and resentment. Forgiveness can be difficult, especially when we feel deeply wronged or hurt. But the Bible calls us to forgive as we have been forgiven. Ephesians 4.32 reminds us, Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as in Christ God forgave you. This verse highlights the importance of forgiveness in our relationships and our walk with God. Holding on to anger and refusing to forgive can create a barrier between us and the peace that God desires for us. When we choose to forgive, we are not condoning the wrong that was done, but we are choosing to release the hold that anger and resentment have on our hearts. Think about someone who has wronged you, someone you find it difficult to forgive. How has holding on to that anger affected you? What might change if you chose to forgive? Forgiveness is a process that begins with a decision. It's a decision to release the anger, hurt, and desire for revenge and to trust God with the outcome. This process may take time and it may require God's help to fully let go, but as we take steps toward forgiveness, we open our hearts to healing and restoration. Here's a prayer for help with forgiveness. Lord, you know the hurt and anger I feel towards name the person or situation. I want to forgive, but it's hard. I ask for your strength and grace to help me release this anger and forgive as you have forgiven me. Heal my heart, Lord, and fill me with your peace. Help me to see this person through your eyes and guide me as I take steps toward forgiveness. Amen. As you pray and work through the process of forgiveness, you may find that your heart becomes lighter. The burden of anger and resentment will begin to lift, and in its place you'll find a deeper sense of peace and freedom. Forgiveness is a journey, not a destination. It's a path that we walk with God's help one step at a time. But as we forgive, we are following in the footsteps of Christ who forgave us even when we were undeserving. In the next chapter, we'll discuss the importance of letting go of grudges and bitterness, further freeing ourselves from the chains of anger. Let's continue this journey of forgiveness, trusting that God will bring healing and peace to our hearts. Letting go of grudges and bitterness. In this chapter, we will explore the importance of letting go of grudges and bitterness, two emotions that can take root in our hearts if we allow anger to linger. Holding on to these feelings can be destructive, but releasing them opens the door to healing and renewal. Grudges and bitterness often begin as unresolved anger. 
When we hold on to these feelings, they can fester, leading to a hardened heart and a damaged spirit. The Bible warns us against letting bitterness take root in our lives. In Ephesians 4.31, we are instructed, Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you along with all malice. This verse challenges us to actively remove bitterness from our hearts, recognizing that it hinders our relationship with God and others. But how do we let go of something that feels so deeply ingrained? Consider a grudge or bitterness you may be holding on to. How has it impacted your life? What would it look like to let it go? Letting go of grudges and bitterness is a process that requires intentional effort and God's grace. It begins with acknowledging these feelings and their impact on your life. Then it involves a conscious decision to release them, trusting that God will handle the justice or resolution that is needed. To let go of bitterness, it's helpful to start with prayer. Ask God to reveal any areas of your heart where bitterness may be hiding. Then ask for his help in releasing these feelings and replacing them with his peace and love. Here's a prayer for letting go of bitterness. Lord, I confess that I've been holding on to grudges and bitterness. These feelings have hardened my heart, and I no longer want them to have power over me. I ask for your help in releasing this bitterness and replacing it with your love and peace. Heal my heart, Lord, and help me to walk in forgiveness and grace. Amen. As you take steps to let go of grudges and bitterness, you'll find that your heart begins to soften. The walls that bitterness built will start to come down, allowing God's love to fill those spaces. You'll also notice a renewed sense of peace and freedom. As the heavy burden of holding on to these feelings is lifted, remember, letting go of bitterness is a daily practice. It requires ongoing prayer and self-reflection, but as you continue to release these feelings to God, you'll experience a transformation in your heart and relationships. In the next chapter, we'll discuss how embracing God's love and grace can further transform your heart, replacing anger and frustration with compassion and understanding. Let's continue this journey of healing, trusting that God will guide us every step of the way. Embracing God's Love and Grace In this chapter, we will explore how embracing God's love and grace can transform our hearts, replacing anger and frustration with compassion, understanding, and a renewed spirit. God's love and grace are the foundation of our faith. They remind us that we are deeply loved and forgiven despite our flaws and mistakes. When we fully embrace this love and grace, it changes the way we view ourselves, others, and the challenges we face. Romans 5, 8 tells us, But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. This verse is a powerful reminder of the depth of God's love, a love so profound that it led Christ to lay down his life for us even when we were undeserving. Consider how deeply God loves you despite your flaws and mistakes. How does this love impact the way you view yourself and others? When we embrace God's love, we are filled with a sense of worth and value that is not dependent on our circumstances or the opinions of others. This love also gives us the capacity to love others even when they frustrate or hurt us. Instead of reacting with anger, we can respond with compassion and understanding, reflecting the love that God has shown us. Embracing God's grace means accepting that we are forgiven and that we are called to extend that same grace to others. It means letting go of the need to be perfect or to have everything under control and instead resting in the assurance that God's grace is sufficient for us. Here's a prayer for embracing God's love and grace. Dear God, thank you for your incredible love and grace. I am in awe of the way you love me. Despite my flaws and mistakes, help me to fully embrace this love and to let it transform the way I see myself and others. Teach me to extend your grace to those around me and to respond to frustration and anger with compassion and understanding. Fill my heart with your love and guide me to live out that love each day. Amen. As you embrace God's love and grace, you'll notice a shift in your heart and mindset. The things that once triggered anger and frustration will begin to lose their power over you. Instead, you'll find yourself responding with a heart full of love, patience, and understanding. Remember, embracing God's love and grace is a lifelong journey. It's something we must choose daily, especially when faced with challenges that test our patience and resolve. But as we continue to lean into God's love, we will be transformed, becoming more like Christ in our thoughts, words, and actions. In the final chapter, we'll discuss how to move forward with a renewed spirit, equipped with the tools and insights we've explored throughout this audiobook. Together, let's embrace God's love and grace, trusting that he will continue to guide and transform us. Moving forward with a renewed spirit. Welcome to the final chapter of Turning to God on Your Frustration and Anger. 
In this chapter, we'll discuss how to move forward with a renewed spirit, equipped with the tools and insights we've explored throughout this journey. As we conclude, my hope is that you feel empowered to handle life's challenges with grace, patience, and a heart full of God's love. Throughout this audiobook, we've explored various aspects of dealing with anger and frustration, from understanding these emotions to seeking God's wisdom, practicing patience, and embracing forgiveness. We've discussed the importance of surrendering our anger to God, letting go of grudges and bitterness, and embracing His love and grace. Now, as you move forward, it's important to remember that this journey is ongoing. There will be moments when you feel challenged, when old patterns of anger and frustration try to resurface, but with the tools you've gained and God's guidance, you are equipped to handle these moments with a renewed spirit. Romans 12, 2 encourages us, Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. This verse reminds us that transformation is possible through the renewal of our minds, a process that is guided by God's word and spirit. As you reflect on your journey, consider the areas where you've experienced growth. What changes have you noticed in the way you handle anger and frustration? How has your relationship with God deepened through this process? Moving forward with a renewed spirit means continuing to seek God in all things. It means making prayer a daily habit, turning to scripture for wisdom, and embracing God's presence as your source of peace. It also means being intentional about practicing patience, self-control, forgiveness, and love in your interactions with others. Here's a prayer for moving forward with a renewed spirit. Lord, thank you for walking with me on this journey. I am grateful for the insights and tools you've given me to handle anger and frustration. As I move forward, I ask for your continued guidance and strength. Help me to keep my mind and heart focused on you, to practice patience and forgiveness, and to embrace your love and grace each day. Renew my spirit, Lord, and use me as an instrument of your peace and love in the world. Amen. As you continue on this journey, remember that you are not alone. God is with you every step of the way, ready to help you navigate life's challenges with wisdom and grace. Whenever you feel overwhelmed, return to the practices we've discussed, prayer, meditation, scripture, and surrender, and allow God's presence to renew your spirit. Thank you for joining me on this journey of turning to God on your frustration and anger. I pray that you've found encouragement, insight, and peace through these chapters and that you are empowered to live a life filled with God's love and grace. As we conclude, may you continue to grow in your relationship with God, experiencing his peace and guidance in all areas of your life. Remember, you are loved, you are forgiven, and you are never alone. God bless you on your journey.